What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Got an exciting video for you today. With housing prices going through the roof and now with interest rates also increasing and set to increase multiple times this year, we want to talk a little bit about a question that I've been getting asked pretty regularly, which is a great question. How do I save for a down payment on a home? Stay tuned. Let's get into it. Number one, set your budget and stick to it. People don't plan to fail, they fail to plan. And the budget is your plan. So it's important to get on the same page with your spouse and make sure that you're looking at it at a household level and set a budget that will accumulate the amount of funds that you're gonna need for your down payment. Number two, when you're saving a great idea is to increase your income. So I hear it quite often, Dave, I can't increase my income. Dave, I got this, I got that. Look, I get it, life happens. But here's the thing, there are all kinds of ways to increase your income. Number one, and probably the best way, is go to your boss and say, hey, what do you need? What can I do to help? And guys, by doing this, your boss is going to say, holy cow, this cat asked me what they can do to help me. That is incredible. That it shows a level of loyalty and responsibility. That means that this person needs to be looked at for more responsibility. And guess what that means? More responsibility typically means more pay. So that's one idea. Number two, there are so many ways to create side hustles in the world right now. Uh, a quick Google search will tell you Uber Eats, Uber, uh, the gig economy is strong in the world that we live in and it seems to be getting stronger by the day. If you want to do this, guys, you don't have to be picky here. Pick up a, a side job, pick up a side hustle and make it happen. And if you have a spouse, you guys, if you have the ability to be able to help each other out, you can multiply this and it will absolutely add up at the end of the year. Number three, cut unnecessary expenses. So we're talking about things like eating out frequently, bank fees, excessive overspending on shopping, consumer goods, so on and so forth ditch buying the latest tech. There's so many different ways to do this, but the important thing is to cut out unnecessary expenses. Uh, another quick idea of what it could be is cable. Guys, cable is not a thing anymore. The cable industry is dying and it's dying fast. And you know what? They've had a lot of shady practices where they've raised prices on people consistently over and over. So they were probably going this way anyway. But you can get Netflix. You can get streaming. You can get cable television, you know, through streaming services for less than 50 bucks a month. So cut out any unnecessary spending. And this is what your budget, num step number one is really gonna help you because your budget is going to allow you to see where these gaps are at and allow you to cut them out early to get that additional boost in your savings potential. Now, a lot of people will say, well, Dave, how do I save by spending money? Well, if you're racking up excessive fees by way of interest, that money is gone and you will not ever get it back. So if you have high interest credit card debt, high interest personal loans, and when I say high interest, typically I'm talking over 10% interest rate annually, cut those out, pay them off, get started on that early. That way these things don't come up and derail you because these things will also play a role in your debt to income ratio when you go to get a mortgage. So you're actually... Uh, you're actually killing two birds with one stone here and doing yourself a solid in the future by going ahead and wiping out this high interest debt because it absolutely will impact you when you go to get that mortgage approval. Number five, research first time home buyers programs. Now there's a common misconception about what the term first time home buyers means. A first time home buyer is typically someone who is not 
purchased a home within the last three years. So this is not first time ever. This is within the last three years. So if you have not purchased a home within the last three years, then you are very likely eligible for first time home buyer programs, whether they be grants or even reduced interest rates that can really, really end up in several, several thousands of dollars worth of savings. Um, we're talking $10,000 I've seen these things at. Um, some of them are government ran, some of them are lender based, but this is a great, great, great idea to help you with your down payment. And guys, who don't like free money? Come on. So the bottom line, saving up for a down payment is a big deal on an FHA mortgage right now. Typically, a down payment is about 3% of the purchase price. On a conventional loan, you'll typically see 10% on average down payment of the purchase price. And for those who are who have done really, really well and who are extremely prepared to be able to purchase a home, they will even go typically to about 20% on a conventional loan as a down payment. And that is the gold standard. That allows you to avoid things like mortgage insurance, which add to your overall costs. So the more that you can save, the better off situation that you're going to be in. Not only are you going to get savings out of your mortgage, but you're also going to have a better and stronger case with the seller of a home. Now, this is something that is typically missed, but when it comes time in a competitive market to make an offer, you could be dealing with five to 10 offers on the home that you offer on. And guys, if you've got five to 10 offers, the seller, this is a highly competitive market right now, not only here in Charleston, but across the country. And by having a strong down payment, by being able to make a strong earnest money deposit, you are really setting yourself up to be in a good situation to be able to win on your bid. It's not only for your mortgage, it is also going to help you to put yourself in a better situation to get the home of your dreams. So get started on it early, tackle debt first, and then dive into these savings and make it happen. And when time comes around for you to purchase a home, the mortgage process will go much smoother and the home buying process in particular will go much better and end much better for you. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you found this information useful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.